100% battery, so do we think we can film this in time? Probably not. So I'm gonna do a video around sort of how to train around, like, within HA recovery and then sort of post because I get a lot of questions about that. I would actually recommend is if you do want to move your body, which is why I loved working with Rita McGregor so much because she was so pro still training. She was like, you know, like exercise is often part of us and it's what we want to do, but it does mean that you've got to make these amendments. First things first, I would look at your goals and why. Like your, probably your, big, your biggest thing is your why. If you're training to not gain weight, if you're training to stay a certain size during recovery or have a certain body within recovery, you're basically conflicting. What we wanna be able to do is train in a way that's making our bodies feel safe to be able to get ourselves up to a baseline, get ourselves our energy up to a baseline that then enables it to be able to work optimally. What this will probably mean, probably 100% mean, is that we are gonna to have to reduce the intensity of exercise and reduce the frequency of exercise to be able to get our bodies to a state that's happy. The reason for this is exercise is a stress on the body. Energy, relative energy deficient and deficiency and hypothalamic amenorrhea often is a combination of lots of stress within the body. And that's what's causing our bodies to sort of shut down these vital things within our bodies, whether that's poor digestion or not having a period or poor nails and low energy, that sort of thing. We want to reduce the stress in the body and we want to increase our energy. If you think with exercise, your exercise is a stress on the body. It's tearing the muscles or it's burning a lot of fuel. It is causing more stress in the body. And obviously, if we're trying to regain energy balance, it's reducing that amount of energy balance. So we really need to think about, OK, if our goal is to restore energy, which I promise you is everything that you want to do, if you're stuck in energy deficiency and you're having period problems or you're having performance problems I promise you getting yourself suffering maybe now and I say suffering in quotations is literally just doing something maybe slightly different to what you're doing now going through those changes redefining what fitness and exercise and your body means to you and trusting and leaning into recovery I promise you will get you to those performance and that energy and potentially those body goals that actually you're chasing now but you're not reaching because you're under fueling or you're under recovering and you're in this energy deficiency and what actually happens is when you work to get your body up just to a baseline so this is like your metabolism your energy levels your cortisol levels to get to a happy place your body is like okay this is where we're at fine we're safe starts having a regular cycle, starts cell producing, starts having a good digestion, starts able to develop muscles, starts able to be able to perform within a gym environment or whatever sport you do if you choose to do that. Once that's then working, that's when our body adapts to potentially the performance goals that you want or the body goals you want or, or even just energy goals that you want. I sit within the realm of like, I love, 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 love fitness and sport always have done. But I also work with people that maybe only did it just to lose weight. So we, we're, I'm chat, bear in mind, I'm chatting to like different groups of people here. So I'm chatting to people that may be actually completely resting and redefining how you look at your body and how you look at movement. Perhaps actually what you really love is like dance and walks and maybe just stretching every now and then. Maybe fitness isn't you. Maybe it's just what you feel as if you have to do. And that's why you're doing these 90 day plans and this hit and things to look a certain way. But then you've also got the other lot of you that I'm talking to, which is like the love of sport and the, the love of performance and that side of things, which is where, okay, like for you to be able to be better within your sport or because you just love fitness, for you to be able to get better and to reach those goals, your body has to be working at least at baseline, which currently it isn't. So for us to be able to get to baseline, we want to reduce all of that stress and reduce as much energy uh, depletion as possible and try to maintain that balance for our bodies to feel comfortable and safe within us sometimes and Steph Buttermore talks about it this really well about overshooting your weight sometimes for your body to get comfortable we have to sort of go above and beyond to be like your body won't say you start to eat maintenance your body is just a bit like mm. yeah now I've been here before I know what this is like some of us have to eat above and beyond what we would what would necessarily be our maintenance calories normally um, 
to be able to recover. Some of us may have to do extra rest and do less exercise to be able to recover. So when it comes to HA recovery, every single thing is individualized. That's why I always say work with a nutritionist or a dietitian or at least your GP to just see where your blood work is, see whether some people's blood work, white blood cells and things like that are so, so depleted and so bad that actually exercise is not recommended at all and is actually gonna do them more harm than good. But what I would say is reducing the intensity, reducing the frequency and reducing the volume. Volume, frequency, kind of the same thing. So you think that actually we wanna do no hit, we wanna really keep our bodies nice and calm, that's why walking outside is really good for us, yoga is really good, Pilates is potentially good for us, and also strength training is potentially good for us. I say potentially, and that's because if you're working within like a one rep range or you're working above what, maybe like a seven, eight out of 10, what that, what that does is can like trigger our central nervous system because it's really done the tears within our body and within our muscles that then requires our bodies to really, really work to try to recover. So anything above sort of like a six or seven out of 10, we kind of want to reduce. And actually looking at it, HA recovery is very similar to pregnancy related training. Again, it's obviously all different for everyone else. Like Tia Claire Toomey, the CrossFitter, was able to train really hard. I've actually found I've been able to keep pretty much my intensity up recently in early trimester or I couldn't and but we want to be lifting within pregnancy and within HA recovery we will only really want to be lifting at like a six or seven out of ten we don't want to be maxing out it's just too much pressure too much stress on the, on the but maintaining some form of strength training within HA recovery could potentially be really beneficial for you if you enjoy it it enables you to still move your body. Strength training does enable my um, battery died just as I was in such a flow, wasn't I? Strength training is potentially good for us. Oh, I was in such a flow, what a nightmare. Not only is some form of movement on the body, uh, but it can also increase our metabolism. The more muscle we have, the more uh, the more muscle we have, the more energy we burn just at rest. So this is another thing to take into consideration more around the fueling of HA. One thing that Rini McGregor taught me was, I said to her, Rini, I've lost my period again. This was like just after, this may be a few months into um, starting CrossFit. And she said, has your body changed? And I was like, yeah, I've probably gained quite a bit of muscle. And she said, so has your food changed? And I was like, no, not really. And she said, there you go, that's the problem. When you're training and when you're strength training, you're potentially gaining muscle. Now given, if you're working at a six or seven out of 10, you might not gain huge amounts, but really we just want to keep the baseline there while we're in HA recovery. We're not trying to make huge, huge results. What we're trying to do is maintain our balance and make our bodies feel safe. So we don't want to stress it out too much anyway. But she was saying, what happens when you're lifting weights and your muscle and your body is changing, so say you're developing muscle, muscle burns more energy at rest. Your body is changing, then your food has to change too. If you're lifting weights and you're progressive overloading, then your, your, food, will, your food requirements will change. The more muscle you have, and say you've developed more muscle from three months ago to now, then your food should change to be able to match that because your metabolism would have increased due to having more muscle mass. So I'm a big fan of strength training as long as, like I said, it's a six, seven out of 10 and you've been cleared by your medical professional that your blood work isn't too extreme that you can't. Then I would look at sort of volume and how much should we be doing. So this is really interesting because it also depends on how much of an active job you have. Are you, do you have a really active job? Is that quite strenuous? For some of us that is plenty and often if we're then doing that plus training on top, plus maybe going for a walk, plus potentially restricting our food, that's the perfect recipe for energy deficiency and hypothalamic amenorrhea. So you wanna look at your lifestyle to see whether actually is this strength training going to benefit me or potentially hinder me in terms of energy balance. Also, one thing that I really had to ask myself is am I willing to, if I wanna train, am I willing to eat the amount of food that I need to be able to sustain this training? So at one point in recovery, half recovery I'd say, I was training like five, six times a week, but I had to sit myself down and go, that's fine if you wanna do that, but are you happy to eat the amount of food, like continuously eat, just to try and fuel your body for this movement? And actually I wasn't. The food, I'm not a huge foodie, so it, what like this thought of food, sort of freak, yeah, and I had like quite disordered eating, so the thought of food was the thing that was making me feel a little bit like, oh, no thank you. So instead, I was like, okay, 
So you're not willing to eat for the amount of movement that you're going to do. So let's reduce some of the movement. And then eventually I was able to find this happy balance. We also want to think within recovery is adequate recovery time. So it can take up to 48 hours for our muscles to fully repair after a workout. Again, given around six, eight, six, seven out of 10, we're not going to do huge amounts of damage to the muscle to be able to repair, but you're still moving your body. So what I would recommend in HA recovery is always having a rest day sort of in between. I would perhaps look at someone, depending on their lifestyle and depending on what they're what their like life and the potentially their goals are and their reasons to train. So I'm jumping around here, but if I was doing an interview with someone, I'd say, right, what are your reasons to train? And a lot of people are like, I just want to feel good. Like I want to feel strong. I want to be able to do a press up. I want to be able to do a pull up. I want to feel good within myself, you know? So a lot of the programs that I write when I work with clients is like, okay, let's really look at like your inner core. What can we work on? It's not going to stress the body huge amounts. It's actually going to benefit you further on in your training when you go back to proper training. For example, within HA recovery and during my half in where I was trying to make some adjustments, but also still restricting and not making enough adjustments was that I changed my training away from HIIT training to more uh, like gymnastic -y base. And actually spending a year with a PT doing gymnastics, so lots of handstands, that sort of thing that wasn't hugely stressful on the central nervous system meant that now when I do anything overhead in CrossFit, I'm really strong. Really, it's it's one of my strongest things. So like jerks, any dumbbell work above the head is, is something that not only do I love, but I obviously love it because I'm good at it. And even like handstand push-ups and holding and wall walks, holding anything sort of upside down is something that I love and actually something I really, really miss during pregnancy. But, you know, I think about the long game. Um, and that's because I worked on those tiny, tiny little things. I did lots of handstand holds and things like that. So when working with a client, sometimes I add in these fun things. I'm like, let's just do a 30 second handstand hold. Like, let's bring some fun into your training rather than going to the gym or going into wherever you work out at home and just focusing on, I've got to do this because this burn calories or I've got to do this because this will make my bum look a certain way. Really what I try to do is add in some fun. And this is where I think it's really important to work with a coach that understands all of this, to understand your mentality and understand your past where, you know, a lot of us have focused all on that calorie burn or just how we look. And it's like, okay, how can we change our mindset to really work on something else instead? Oh my God, and then my camera just ran out of memory. <laughs> so I would try and inject in a little bit of fun within their training, if you like. Then I would also look at their lifestyle and see, okay, how much training and is going to be beneficial within their lives? What I have found quite common is that I would offer maybe a two or three day workout split, normally a full body split, again, working on fun things, but also those like little tiny inner muscles. So we might not necessarily be working on those huge compound lifts, but we'll be doing like resistance band pull-ups and we'll be doing resistant band works and lots of like inner core and pelvic floor work and things like that, because we're going to build that baseline back up and we're going to build that baseline ready for once we've had those three periods to then slowly increase that exercise intensity a little bit more as well as like your food and just checking with the lifestyle so potentially it might look like monday wednesday friday train or it might look like monday wednesday saturday train something along those lines oh guys 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 i just missed my doctor's phone call appointment how annoying i was like i think i've more or less summed up how i would approach training in HA recovery, slow and steady as long as you've got a sign off. And of course you're fueling for it. And of course you're not doing excessive steps and things like that. There's so many things that, and it's so individualized that I would have to sort of look at someone's lifestyle um, as a whole and just make sure that they're like, they're not then adding in training and obviously looking at their why to be like, okay, is this gonna be beneficial? For them and then as you come say you've got three periods or you you've got a period and you want to start introducing exercise I would do more or less exactly the same thing in terms of that approach but I would offer a progressive overload training program so this would be really really slowly slowly increasing that weight each week or slowly slowly pushing the body and we would sort of maybe work around your cycle if that's something that you would want to do and we would slowly sort of try to ease our way into it and then every few weeks we would just pull back a little bit just to help that body you know around ovulation and around your cycle we wouldn't push the body too much but maybe at times where our hormones are suitable we would potentially push it that little bit more so maybe you know in that 
like couple first couple of days after your period after you or on your period when you're starting to feel better that's when i probably encourage you to push a little bit more i dial it back just around sort of ovulation just to encourage your body to be able to ovulate this is then afterwards we would maybe do like a little bit more cardio or we would just see how the body's feeling and we work together and we work really tightly just to be able to see okay how has our body responded to this exercise has our body been able to ovulate at a suitable time has our body been able to have a period have, how have we been feeling have we been wiped out okay no all things good okay next week next month then we can potentially build on that you see so like it's so individualized and when working with someone after they want so they they've got their period back and they want to get into exercise it really is just sort of like testing the water a little bit and also like understanding and making sure that they're doing something they even want to do right like i can prescribe all of this weightlifting but what if they actually hate that and they're only doing it to look a certain more then you know we're falling back into those old habits and perhaps maybe just going for a dance with your mates is enough movement for movement for you because maybe you're actually not interested in fitness lifting weights or any sport maybe that's just not you and that's absolutely okay too but yeah if someone wants to get back into the gym and get back training it's really individualizing it's really working closely with them slowly increasing that intensity constantly checking in with the body constantly making sure that we're fueling ourselves for those sessions and also we're working at a rate that's not going to stress the body out a little bit too much and that is my two pence ramble preach it about ha hypothalamic amenorrhea, relative energy deficiency, and exercise. Bye.